You can see where there's been a triangle pulled out here to fill in this spot. This is going to grow in above these other parts. And as you're doing that part, you're doing a line down their neck to put a crest on their neck. And then you do, again, it depends on the dog. She's got a little low spot here by the tail. So that's been pulled out. And then you, after that, you can pull down the sides. You can already see the difference in texture here. When you constantly clip miniature schnauzers, it's when they turn silver, platinum, and a lot of times they get those skin tags and stuff because their hair follicle is not healthy, okay? This is constantly pulled and pulled and pulled to put this pattern on to get them where you want. Again, it depends on the dog, how far you take it here or whatever. It's basic, but you need to know the faults of your dog so you can correct it. You guys got any questions or on this one? The object is to do the different sections so at showtime they're all at the right length, right? Yeah, correct. It's all balanced out. Uh, let me see. Where is it? You can kind of see in this picture if you want to pass it around or whatever. Yeah. Here's a, here's one of a black mini. It's kind of interesting. You very, very rarely see a really good black miniature schnauzer, and you very, very rarely see a good pepper salt giant schnauzer. Why the colors and the textures and all that stuff are reversed, I have no idea. But again, I've been doing this since 1972, and that's just what it is. The only parts on this, this clipper are her cheeks, and partially under her neck, and they, we want this clean and fine, so that'll be the last part that will be pulled out. And you can also clip her, their, their rear, okay? But again, all this, um, what, 12, 14 weeks on her? Yeah, 12, uh, 12 weeks. Well, it'll be 12 week coat by the time we go to the first show. Okay, yes. We've been working on it. So one setting, is that all of that group are stripped yeah. or body or just the tail? Where you can see where her furnishing start, oh, no, all this okay. to the sides, all that's cool. And then what is the length of her normally to strip? Uh, I like it where you can tell it's kind of dead, at least an inch, inch and a half. I'll show you on this other bitch and stuff. Uh, yeah, they need to feel her coat. Yeah, I'll, I'll have you uh, feel her coat. You can see when it's ready to be pulled. Mm -hmm. I can pull, if they're not shown, I can pull down a miniature schnauzer an hour, hour and a half from here, all over the body, all that. And that's what I'm gonna do with that bitch, okay? I'm gonna start her today and I'll take her home. We live really close to each other and I'll finish her off and then she can go home. But I want you to see, again, this is an art. Very few people can do this. And my deal and stuff with grooming and everything is, there are groomers and there are artists. Am I right? Yeah. Am I right? Yeah. A lot of people can groom, da 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 da, but very few people can put a pattern on a dog and maintain it and Present it healthy. Like this coat's really healthy. The other thing too is it I'll wait. The only time that we bathe the jackets is right after I pull them down. Once they're in show coat, you don't bathe their backs and stuff. There's uh, some crisp shampoo and stuff that you can use and stuff you don't want. This is kind of a funny story. Uh, this was just for a poodle person. She asked uh, what kind of shampoo I use for my pets. And I said, Teresa May. So this gal looked up all over the internet trying to find Teresa May. She never found it. <laughs>
lucky. I have known, I'm sorry, and, and seen their work of some of the best carrier men in the world. We're talking Peter Green, Gabriel Rangel, who's won groups of the garden and best in show, top, top winning handlers. Uh, Clay Cody lives here. Um, they just, that's their job, that's their artists, okay? They've been the best in the world. So I, I just really want to stress again that it's an art and uh, it's not easy. And I'll, when I get this other bitch out and stuff like that, I want you to just, if maybe I'll just have a line so you can come by and just feel her coat. It's not great uh, because she's older, she's not in show condition, but her coat's been stripped out. Uh, Deanna, how old is she? Which one? This one? The older one. Oh, she's uh, three and a half. Okay. I'll take her. <laughs> and so then she uh, she went on to say, uh, let me see, how, how did I do it? I said, if you have a problem, a health issue with your labradoodle, can you call your breeder at 2 o'clock in the morning and say, my dog's doing this and this and this, and she can tell you what to do? She said, no, she only wants my money. I said, you just set it off. <laughs> you just set it all. I don't need to go any further than that. But <coughs> it, going back to this, I do two hands. I'm going to, okay. I wasn't for sure what all uh, Nancy was going to have available for me, but there's groomy chalk there. There's a shampoo, there's blades, all, you know, stripping knives uh, for whatever. What I like to do is I will actually... Is that chalk? Chalk. chalk. That's the chalk. Okay. Chalk. Chalk. And the reason for chalk is? Grip. 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 Okay. And again, you always want to pull the coat the way the hair grows. Like, I'm not going to pull this out going this way. You always pull it the way the hair grows. And another interesting thing is stuff with a pulled coat, 
the hair is banded. I don't know if you can see, but it's black and it's white, and it's black and it's white. Individual strands are banded, okay? Even with, the, let's say, the Lakeland or whatever, those coats are banded uh, different colors of red or whatever, but they are banded. And again, it's a heavier or uh, a healthier, healthier coat. You're being very good. Good girl. Yeah, but what does it, when it says the rolled, rolled hand technique? Okay, a rolled coat is like this dog was in already stripped out and you started to show her. Uh -huh. Then you would just be constantly working and pulling up. Oh, okay. Pull, pulling that's up the long stuff. That's what that means. That's yes, rolling a coat, yeah. Okay. Okay. You have to do it every week. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Stay I thought on top it was of it. So you hold your hand or something. I just didn't think so. Yeah. Yeah. You always want. Yeah. Yeah. That's why she does it. Yeah. yeah. Again, you want to pull the way you want the hair to grow. And always keep your wrist straight. Your arm and your wrist. Usually I do this on the floor between my legs. So. But, now, if you were uh, using a stripping knife, would you still use the chalk? Yes. You would? Okay. Yes. Again, I'm not a knife person because yeah. I have a tendency to break off coat instead of pulling it out. Okay. This is how I learned, and I've been doing it forever and stuff, so uh, I'm going to get a patch on her third of the skin so you can see how close I'm going to take this down. And because she's a retired champion, uh, we're not putting her in pattern or anything like that. We're just keeping her in this harsh, wiry, correct coat, okay? It's not uh, for any other reason but to maintain good, healthy skin to keep the colors and uh, uh, the texture. You can see my chalk flipping up. But anyway, I always use two hands. Keep the skin tight and pull the way I want the hair to grow. And do you always do it on one foot? <laughs> <laughs> on one foot? You're balancing. Oh, yeah. Well, like I said, I usually do it on the floor. I sit down on the floor, watch TV, and pull out hair. So, but anyway. Sorry, that's, I couldn't resist. It's interesting that you watch. Usually I stick my tongue out, but I have a mask on. <laughs> No. <laughs> the other thing that I do that I'm really proud of what I do, I teach people how to show dogs. I have classes three times a week. And with this COVID thing, since there haven't been any shows, um, they're starting up again. The first ones are going to be in Tucson, uh, November 4th, 5th, and 6th. And uh, there's shows in Texas this weekend, next weekend, Oklahoma. I'm not going because I'm pretty much, I've been doing it so long and I know too many games and it's not fun anymore. It's much fun as it used to be. Uh, but I won't get into that. But again, the object of the game is to keep this hair follicle open to increase color and texture. Okay? It's not just to be... Uh, any other reason or hard work or and the older the coat is the easier it is to pull and this is really a good coat good length to pull now is there a tiny short hair growth underneath the pulling she's got a little bit of undercoat and i will pull that out too but you will pull that out yeah, okay yeah. i will pull that out i'm gonna try to show her See that? See the hole in her coat? That's to the skin. Okay? And then uh, the hair, like you can see on, on the other bitch, it's really, really black and dark because she's got that advanced, uh, probably a 10 day, we usually do uh, five to 10 days. First the skin's gonna come in black, and then it's gonna come in, uh, you can see the short, darker hairs come in, and then they'll come in a blue day, okay? So, 
She's very photogenic, obviously. But, ah, oh, the other thing that I was going to say is, I've been doing this for so long, and this, uh, there's only been 45 dogs in the history of AKC to have 100 best in shows, okay? So this is something that I've personally done. I have tried to collect the signatures of those handlers that have put 100 best in shows on one dog. And there's only 45 of them in the history. And I think I have about 30 of them so far, but I, there's some of them that I need, that the handlers are retired, that I need to do my homework and stuff and get them taken care of. But the best part of it for me is None of them are saying, oh my God, go away, little girl. They're saying, oh wow, nobody's ever done this before. So I do have the only book of uh, these handler signatures and stuff that uh, I've done 100 best in shows. And I want to stress, again, if you guys can do the knives and not uh, break off coats, it's practice, 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 pulling hair and not breaking it off. If you break it, you're defeating the purpose, you might as well go get your clippers. But I have a bunch of knives that I've collected over the years, all kinds of stuff, and they're the new Arturo ones are stuff are there. Get the one that fits best in your hand, and they're different knives. You can see how, I don't know if you can see how skinny or how narrow that blade is versus this, they're all for a different place, part of the body. Okay? So is there a technique so that you're not breaking the hair? You have to figure it out. Get in there close, close to the skin and pull, but make sure you don't scratch it or, you know, lots of times I can also, I can always tell when uh, a dog's been stripped with a knife and stuff because they'll have knife scratches on it. Oh, okay. right, right. Only okay. Hair, yes. skin, right. That's why I do this. Yeah. So. Because I just bought two knives, and I'm thinking, am I breaking the hair or am I pulling? So. It, you if know. you're getting to the skin, okay, and you're not leaving any, you know, broken coat and stuff, okay, then so you're doing it right. Yeah. But if you can go and make it clean and bald like this. Let me show you again. This one's a little bit cleaner. You can see how close. Okay. okay. So it's just kind of fuzzy, a little bit of fuzzy. Left. A little bit of fuzz, yeah. And I can go back and pull that fuzz too, but you want to get clear to the skin, pull it straight the way you want it to grow. And again, for a healthier, better color, if this bitch had been clippered and stuff, she would have been your platinum color, you know? And that's why a lot of them have the skin tags and little warts and stuff, because their skin is not healthy and those hair follicles are plugged up. But when you're stripping and stuff, your coat is clean and fresh and healthy. It's always coming in new. And again, since this one is a retired champion, I don't have to put her in a pattern. I'm just going to pull all this out today, okay? Now, have you done border terriers? Yes. So do you go to the skin on a border terrier too? First time. Okay. First time. I would pull the skin just to open up that hair follicle. Okay. Uh, if, if I'm interested in buying a giant schnauzer puppy or a schnauzer puppy and they clipper it, I won't buy that dog from them. Because it's harder to pull out once they've been clippered than it is to get a fresh puppy coat and you just rip that stuff out. And again, this coat's basically dead. Did you see her cry? Did she cry at all? No. Again, it's technique. Keeping it straight. I'm, I'm pushing forward with this to keep the skin taut and I'm pulling this hair out. So, 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 so tell me what rooms you guys have. I have a border carrier. Okay. And I've only got stripped. Okay. Someday I'll have a border carrier. Right now I have antlers that don't need this. Yeah, <laughs> I'm here with her. Okay. But I've used the knife 
and hand, you know, my thumbs and fingers. Sure. But I was curious, I just bought two, like, I'm left-handed, so I bought a right-handed so I could get the other side. And, but am I pulling, am I breaking or am I pulling? I, I feel like I'm pulling because I feel well, like I'm getting the shaft. I, I, I can do this. Yeah. Both hands. Okay. <laughs> But again, if, if you look at the coat, you can see the agute part of it where it's... Yeah, and Porter's got the banding too, right. so I'm seeing all that. Yeah. You know. So you must be doing the right thing. Okay. Uh, wire hair dachshund. Same thing. Uh, my very, very, very first giant schnauzer back in 1972. A black one. And my breeder's telling me how to strip and stuff. And I stripped my puppy down to the skin and it came back with all these white hairs in it. And I started crying, I go, oh no, I made a skunk out of my dog. But what it is, is you pull those, those white hairs out, it's like the follicle is scarred, but it'll come back black the second time, okay? And uh, in doing that, uh, especially uh, if you have a black dog that you're stripping out, you want to leave those white hairs to prove that you're not dying the coat. Okay? I know too much. <laughs> I know how they color them. I know how they, you know, all the different tricks and stuff. Still learning, but it's just, uh, I just think it's really important to maintain a good, sound, healthy coat. Again, a lot of it depends on uh, the temperature and the location of the dog and the humidity and all that kind of stuff. I can't stress enough how important it is to know your breed standard and what the outline is supposed to look like and where you can maintain to get to where you want. One of the questions that I asked in my handling class is, what is the country of origin and the original purpose of this breed? And unless you have a Belgian sheepdog or an old English sheepdog, most people are in trouble. Okay? I want people to be educated with what they're doing and how they're doing it. And this is just a little, like, pet peeve with me and stuff. People get so upset, upset because professional handlers will beat them. Okay? Why? Because these people do it for a living. That's what put a roof over their head and food on their table for their kids. They do that for a living. I don't go in there and tell them how to do, or they don't come into your house and tell you how to do your job. But they've been doing it. That's their profession. It's the only sport in, in America that the actual amateur competes against the professional. So if you're going to be competitive, you better step it up and know what you're doing. It's that simple. It's that simple. Uh, I've done some serious winning with a few dogs, and it's really, really hard. I, I, I like to explain it in my class. When you're putting a championship on a dog, it's like playing checkers with your neighbor. You win, I win, no big deal. But if you're going to do what they call special, a dog, have a dog that's got their championship, and you're going to try to rank it nationally, you're playing chess with Bobby Pitcher. It's a whole different ball. I'm going to pull up a little bit more on her. You guys throw out questions again. I've never done this before. Uh, uh, I've obviously pulled hair before, but I've never, you know, put on a demonstration. Put on a demonstration. So, good girl. But you can see, easy girl, you can see how clean and to the skin that is. Now, originally, like when you said you started with a puppy, you never stripped the, the legs? The never. 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 You just okay. where you want the harsh, the wiry okay. jacket. Okay. You just strip jackets. Okay. You don't do legs. Okay. okay. I didn't know, like you're saying, to try to recover a coat. If you what's, to do it. what's interesting and in stuff is the harsher, the wiry the coat is here, the less furnishings they'll have on their legs. Mm -hmm. I don't care if it's a giant schnauzer or a wire hair dachshund. The harder the coat here, the less furnishings they have on their legs. I just call it. That's the way my first male schnauzer was. He had a harsh coat and less on the leg. It, it wasn't fluff. It was right, right, yeah.
that's what we do. So, uh, again, Nancy's got shampoo out there. You don't want to use Theresa May or your local pet shop shampoo and stuff to, to work their jacket, but you can wash them if they need it with the crispy coat stuff. Now, like border terriers, they say don't bathe, bathe them 24 hours before or after you do stripping. Correct. For that reason. So, I mean, a lot of people bathe their borders but once a year, which that's not happening in my house. But right, right, right. Yeah. I'm not showing her either. Right. So I just want her to look like she's supposed to look. So. Right. Again, read your brief standard, know what it's all supposed to be, the yeah. outline of the dog. And again, you're not showing, so you don't have to put her in pattern. Right. But you want a good, sound, healthy. Again, see how I'm using both hands? Yeah. Keeping it tight and pulling to the skin. You want through it? Go. Thank you. So, that way you demonstrate with you how you use your knife? Sure. I'm just curious. I don't, I could probably honestly say that there's not a person that's been in dogs dogs that don't have one of these knives. You got one? Oh, I have Hot one of those, yeah. Okay, yeah. everybody gets one of these knives. Mm -hmm. They're the best. This is one of my favorite ones. What I like to do with this one is rake through, just rake it through. I'm not grabbing it with my thumb, I'm just running it through the coat. And it'll pull out a lot of stuff. And then I'll go back in with my fingers and pull out the coat. Do you call that carding? Do you call yeah. that carding, right? Is that in every strip <laughs> Just <laughs> No, he keeps throwing questions at me and okay. stuff. So uh, again, it's just easier to pull lots of times, get a lot of the scar hair out of it, mm -hmm. and then go back in and get that chalk in there. And it's just for gripping. Yeah. Now, do you strip the schnauzer's ears on the outside? No. That's clipper? Clipper. Okay. The top of their head is pulled. You can yes. kind of see. Yeah, she's got a little mohawk going on. Yeah. So, but again, it's just really, really important. And the function of the game is healthy coat for color and texture. And the skin, you said too, it helps to protect sure. preserve the skin. Sure. Keeps those skin and hair follicles. Uh, with the harsher coated dogs and stuff, you can do this, but you can't pull coat on a poodle. Right. Okay? If, it, if the breeds have hair versus a harsh, wiry coat, then you can do this. So, but anyway, I don't know how much more time I have. How much time did you want? I get an hour. 12.36. Okay. okay. So, you got a question for me? Oh, I was looking at the time. I'm sorry. Oh, okay. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Okay. No, no, no. I just want you to realize how important this process is and that it really is an art. There's very few people in the valley that'll do this and you'll pay for it. But uh, the question I have is how do you introduce like a branch puppy to this? Because uh, she's very calm, but like a puppy, I'd imagine, be a lot different. I would, uh, I would rake through the coat first and just have a good experience. But again, you're the adult human, this is a dog. And you have to be a better dog than they are. And once they understand, the first time they cry, they'll go, oh, no, it's okay. No. Knock it off. Stand yeah. up. Okay? <laughs> I'm bad. I have people in my class and stuff that, oh, it's okay. It's okay. No, it's not okay to be stupid. Knock it off. <laughs> yeah. 
It's not okay to be stupid. Uh, another bad thing that I have in classes, when people go to stack up their dogs and stuff, they let the dogs lean on them. How many legs does the dog have? Four. So why do they need five or six? Can they do their job on five or six? No. This is a funny story too. I was showing dogs in Cheyenne, Wyoming, and I was showing a beast club. And uh, there was a heavy set woman there that had this beast little puppy, and she's sitting there ringside, and this beast was actually in her lap. In her lap. So, okay. I've got a top winning beast little bitch with me. She was still in the class, okay? She, I had just got, did some big one in at the National with her. And this gal, this is so funny. This gal comes out, she lets this puppy stand there for a second, and she plays around with her baby. She goes, oh my God, you don't have to work so hard. She picked her up again and then sat down. <laughs> I'd like to see this dog do a job out in the field. <laughs> but yeah, uh, it's just kind of crazy how, again, people got to learn that they got to be better dogs than the dog. That's the biggest problem. Go ahead. Is the fee different than a normal pet? Is the fee the price to get a dog's trip? I charge $25 an hour. Okay? Excuse me. How long is the process? Huh? How long is the whole process? Oh, let's see. This part, probably five different sections. Okay. Once you decide where you want to go, Already, just look at, you can see where her wither break is. And that's why you can pull this out first, so this hair is going to grow in to balance out the neck. If you want to put a neck on a dog, you, you slip down right down the back center of the neck, like that bitch, and stuff, so you can put a, an arch on her neck. You can create a bunch of stuff, okay? Again, you have to be an artist, and you have to really know your breed standards, and you have to know what you want out of it, okay? It's, uh, if you're doing your pets, and you could just work it like this, you will be impressed. And how healthier that coat's going to be. I believe when I was 20 years old, and I got a show schnauzer as a, not, not quite a loner dog, but from the breeder. They were training me, so uh -huh. they gave me an actual chart. Right. Each section, and I had to strip each section at week one, two, three, four, right. whatever it was. I was going to bring mine, but I don't know. Right, yeah. <laughs> so there is, there is paper, you know. Sure. Well, well now it's all on the internet, probably, but there's sure. also doing that. To, yeah, so. to explain, you pull out the little parts first, yeah. this, tail, and this, uh -huh. so you can put an arch on the neck, mm -hmm. and then the sides all basically come down at the same time. Yeah, it's so interesting. Yeah. <laughs> it's a real art. It's coming back to me. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> years later, like, it's an art. <laughs> uh, again, I've been doing this forever. I show a lot of different breeds and stuff, but I'll be really honest, I'm kind of burned out on the game. Um, this is this is me saying it in a nutshell, okay? I think that the average breeder doesn't know a good quality dog, okay? In the litter, they don't know the correct structure, they don't know what they're trying to achieve, and I think that a lot of people that don't show themselves and stuff will find a professional handler that can win with anything. So they put a championship on their pet and they go home and breed it. So you have champion pets being bred to champion pets. Does that make sense? So I love a good dog. In my classes, I'll ask, what is the recommended angle for a correct shoulder? Anybody know? 45 degrees, here and here, okay? Uh, what, I'll ask him, uh, what is bend and stifle? Okay, mm -hmm. okay. You, you've got to know your dog parts and, so you can adjust or fix or whatever. 
I have this gal that comes to class on Saturday morning that actually has a belt and sheets on. And I told her, this gal's a case. Anyway, I told her, I said, you really need to stack this dog to help him so he looks better. She, she said, well, he's perfect. I said, excuse me? I said, we've been showing dogs for 150 years and we haven't found one yet. She said, well, he is. I go, then you better clone that sucker. <laughs> but uh, again, we haven't found one yet, uh, the perfect dog yet, pretty close. Uh, I can honestly say, since I've been showing these dogs and stuff and doing this traveling, I've been to Crush three times. I've been to the World Show in Stockholm, Sweden. I've been to the World Show in Mexico City. And I've had my hands or eyes on some of the best dogs in the world. And it's really been a, a treasure and stuff. I can't teach I. I can't teach you balance and all that stuff. You really need to learn and study that. Some people have it naturally. I think I do. I know where the movement is and how they should move. But it's just really, really important that you know and understand what the original purpose of your breed is and again to establish what they should look like. My question next is what is a, a golden doodle supposed to look like? Whatever you want it to look like. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. I saw two today. <laughs> and then the other thing once once you get the coat all brushed out, you should get a wild boar bristle brush. Uh -huh. It just keeps it cleaner and pulls out all the yucky stuff. But her coat's too long to really see the difference with this. But for a show dog and stuff, handlers carry these in their back pocket. But I have no idea how old some of these knives are. Mm -hmm. I mean, I've got some old ones. It'll be a very good. And her uh, skirt is looks wiry too. The texture of it on the sides is nice and dark. Well, is that just her natural color underneath there, or is that? Well, she's pulled? been pulled down to here, oh, so she you're, has. Oh, you're okay. seeing the. Okay, still hanging. Yes. Yeah. 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 It looks really pretty though. Yeah. This is a nice stitch. She is. Very and they usually take it for the first nipple under the armpit. Yeah. Oh, they do. Yes. Oh, okay. I don't know if any of you want to try this. I'll put some chalk on it, and if you want to come up and pull it. Sure. Sure. Anybody else? I know. I do. Go for it. <laughs> I don't want to I know. I love it. Go for it. Whoever. Oh, you go first. <laughs> you go first. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, she does.
I had the opportunity to, to start showing her and finish it, put her championship on it. So, but anyway, I, I hope I answered some of you guys' questions, helped you a little bit. Again, you do it for color and texture and healthier coats. Skin. So if I get a new Border Terrier puppy and I need to show it, I can take classes from you for handling from sure. little and then go from there. Okay. Do you still have any classes like in Mesa or Gilbert? I have one in Mesa on Tuesday nights at Tinaki Park. I, I don't know. I've, I've been to you, well, I had Swizzy from Barbara Martinez. Okay, okay. And, uh, 